when it when I when I thought of the title, it it, it does sound quite aggressive, doesn't it? Can man versus Gantz, and you can imagine them in both corners and ready for a fight. So let's find out if that if that really is the case, or whether they can be more friends than foe. Now, b before I actually begin that particular part of the debate, I just want to say a few things which really create the environment where we're having such discussions. And that really, when we talk about ourselves here in, in Project Place, uh, we talk about the, the, the people-centric approach. People at the end of the day, irrespective of how we're adopting things, are really, really important. And th there are changes out there that we're all facing. So how does that affect the way we go about running and managing projects? Well, I think the starting point would be to consider the what I would say are three pillars to an organization's success. Now, there are many things that make organizations successful, obviously, but there are a few, few things that also can ensure that that success isn't achieved. And, and really, to ensure we get the, what we need in terms of that success, we really need to consider the three elements I've got here, information management, project management, and communication, and ensure that they sort of effectively work with each other. Now, myself and probably a lot of people on the call get very excited about technology developments and things of that nature, and some others don't. And I think when we, when we consider this situation, really, technology is just something that's here today, but this problem has been around a lot longer than that. And the problem has been solved in the past, and it still is today. So when we consider, for those of us uh, long enough in the tooth, um, when we left university or in the 80s and prior to that, the 70s or whatever, we might be working in offices where, of course, we've needed to manage what we did. We had a filing cabinet in the corner, which had the information uh, readily uh, stored and easy access, and, and still had access control rights, certain file cabinets for certain individuals, and so on. We had communication that was relatively simple, because we could talk to each other in the room, because a lot of the time we were working with our colleagues, and we still quite rightly have verbal communication over the phone. And also, we need to organize ourselves. And that would be even in the simplest form of writing down a list of things that need to be done. So those things are in out there for a long time. But in many respects, they've been challenged by the world that we face today. And that challenge is really around, maybe let's start with the key IT trends. There's phrases out there such as globalization. The world's a smaller place. Obviously, physically not smaller. But actually, in terms of communication, yes, it is. The expectation, 24 by 7. Recently, I was at an event once people were talking about work used to be somewhere where we went. Now, work is something we do. We can pretend to be part of our families and, and being socially with, with, with friends, but work's never far away. We dip in, we dip out. And if we don't do that, then the competition is doing that and therefore stealing an advantage. And then we have the mobility. People historically have thought about that as, as the home worker. Obviously, that is part of that group. But mobility is about being out and about, and as I say, working wherever you may be. There are some interesting stats out there. One that I read that by 2015, IDC is suggesting 30-odd percent of the worldwide workforce will be remote workers. That's 1.3 billion people. Now, not necessarily permanently in one location at home, whatever, but out about, sometimes at home, sometimes elsewhere. Here in the UK, on the 30th of June, we had the flexible working coming into play, where suddenly it wasn't just parents that were allowed to consider taking some different working patterns with their employee, but everybody. So it's, it's happening. And we also have what's commonly called as consumerization of IT. Some organizations do have the bring your own device, bring your own software. A lot of us are very comfortable with our own iPhone, Android, whatever it might be. It's in our hands. It's part of the society that we all live in today. So when we have that, we also obviously, if we're going to start using these, we have the other aspect of the security and the ad adoption of the cloud. Security isn't something over the course of this seminar, webinar, sorry, that I, I propose to discuss in much detail but it is something I'll happily do, would talk about, because obviously it's a key part of the current climate. So we have these trends, but we also have the business, what I would call business trends. From an ecosystem point of view, we suddenly have businesses that not run in isolated production silos anymore. 
those days are not necessarily gone, but they're diminishing. We need to sort of engage and work directly with the best partners and the most important stakeholders and customers. We need to make an organization from ourselves and other companies. And that, and therefore, sort of necessitates the role of multiple teams, whether that's internally or externally. Because obviously, as organizations, we might be working with colleagues in other physical locations within the same company. But invariably, we're working with colleagues that are in external organizations. And the reason this is happening is a drive for efficiency. It's a phrase that's been out there for a long time. It's particular coming out about eight, what was it, probably six years ago, and something we've all heard of. But how you squeeze more out of what you currently have. Higher productivity demand. But the reality is, if you don't do it, somebody else is. So we suddenly have, I sort of paint it as a picture, a romantic world of this office where we just came in, saw everybody, worked with a filing cabinet in the corner, communicated and organized our work. Those were, that world is challenged. And that world's challenged by the, the fact that people now have multiple teams working 24-7 and we're driving for efficiency and they might be utilizing their own devices and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, it would boil down to projects. So here I am talking to members, non-members of the APM. And projects are a key uh, essential to a success. And with that in mind, I'd be interested for the people on the call, how many projects does your organization run simultaneously at the moment? Now, a project could mean many things to many people. It could mean we're talking about a simple ad hoc get something done over five to ten days to what a lot of us consider a much more complex project potentially over months stroke years. So we're looking at here on the audience about 72 percent of the audience here has 50 plus more projects. How we're managing them. And then 25 percent have 10 to 50. So invariably there are a good number of things that we're trying to manage. Now, when we consider projects, I mention here five new project buzzwords. They're not new anymore. They're things that a lot of us are familiar with. It might start with what's termed as rolling wave planning, just in time, focusing on the right things, but moving forward and fleshing out the plan as we go, being adaptable. And really, that is very similar to the whole concept of lean, agile, and Kanban, which will form a big part of what I have to say over the next five to ten minutes or so. But the customer, the customer has a voice more than ever. And suddenly customer centric, stakeholder heavily involvement in the project, and therefore the perceived value being increased. And if you're not involving that customer, then you can bet your bottom dollar your competition is. Down to activity streams, which is relating much more to a social technology world, shaping effective behavior to what is probably classed as social. No turning back. A lot of people coming into the work environment very familiar with that, that world that they, they've experienced and how does that play in the project space. So really that brings us into the, the start of the potential fight because we talk about traditional PM versus social PM. Traditional, you know, project management on top of everything, a more waterfall type effect, low level detail planning hard to change generally, not impossible. Obviously, things do change through change requests and things of that nature, and report gathering, through to a more social, delegating responsibility type world. Now, when we talk about the traditional, we're probably talking about the Gantt world. And I'll be interested to know how many of you out there, I imagine very high, are familiar with and use Gantt's, whether that's a Gantt in terms of maybe even Excel down to things such as Microsoft projects and things that, that are that ill, but how you're organizing the workload that you have. Because we're familiar with Gantt because obviously we've got about 95%. Because Gantt's been around, I think it was Henry Gantt around 1911, and it's a very, very useful tool allowing us to visualize key milestones that we have to deliver and look ahead planning to make sure they get done. And when we talk about that, we're talking about critical path analysis. We're talking about the resource modeling that might be attached to that. We're talking about dependencies. And I can sense a lot of you on the call getting excited by the very thought. But when we talk about social, we're probably moving towards 
a Gantt world, a Gantt world in terms of, sorry, a Kanban world in terms of how that supports a much more knowledge sharing collaborative environment. And the Kanban is nowhere near as well known as the Gantt. And it's for that reason I'd like to spend a few moments now just to, to put some meat on the bones of what is a Kanban board. Because at the end of the day, a Kanban board is a to-do list. It's an ability for us to keep an eye on what do we need to get done, what's in progress, and what is actually being done. So whether we termed it as a Kanban board in the past, we're all used to doing it. We're all used to doing it even for the most simplest things of organizing. We're coming to the end of summer, so hopefully most of you had a summer holiday. It might be organizing what needs to get done before you travel off, collecting the money, whatever it might be, things that need to get done. Where actually Kanban started from was back in around the 1940s. I think this photograph's probably a little bit later than that, 50s. But really starting with Toyota, a brand that we're all familiar with and all very comfortable with how successful they were, particularly 60s and 70s and 80s, in terms of the efficiency running of their, their organization. And it started because they found a better engineering process from actually quite an unlikely source, the supermarket. They noticed that people, the store clerks, were actually ordering things in line with what they had as a store inventory rather than what suppliers and vendors were saying. So suddenly the ability to build cars against demand rather than forecasts. And that really sort of changed the whole scope, the whole approach of the organization. Because Kanban boarding is about, it's a Japanese visual for can and ban for card and it is giving us that environment and it's a pull system really taking on board things that need to get worked on and the idea is really looking for continuous improvement because we're focused on visualizing the work that the teams are, 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 are actually putting effort on and the concept is about a flow of information stop starting and start finishing a lot of us me particularly we sometimes judge or feel we're judged by how many things we're getting going. Let's, get, let's focus on getting things worked on, the right things, correct the amount of work in progress, and manage the business that way. So yes, it started in that production environment, but it suddenly is lending itself to supporting a whole different variety of approaches in different markets. And that sort of brings me on to why it is is it the next big collaboration trend? How come? Where's it come from? What's its relevance? Let's be honest, we've run a lot of successful projects and still have and still will with a waterfall approach. So what's the big deal? Why is Kanban so important? Some people would say it handles large projects with grace, a very subjective view. But actually, let's all sort of build on that a little bit and see why will it help run such projects? and what sort of projects could it be used for? Well, it's probably worth sort of taking a step back to say why is it actually spreading. It's spreading for what I would say five main reasons, which I'm going to go through over the next few minutes. The adoption of Lean and Agile through to the fact that the technology is ready today. So let's pick on those. We talk about Lean and Agile. Obviously, I'm talking about a lean approach coming from the manufacturing world, which is what I've just said, from what Toyota was one of those areas. The focus on reducing waste and adding value, reducing costs on things that aren't adding anything without, therefore, affecting the quality of what you're producing. A mindset. Yes, it's come from an engineering background. But as you can see from some of the books that are highlighted on this slide, it isn't just a mindset for that area. And agile, the whole idea of being able to adapt to change quickly, which in the climate that we're in is something we all have to be uh, mind, mindful of. But obviously when we talk about that, we're really thinking of a software industry and the agile approach is something that's um, very clearly uh, thought of in that, pro in that world. And I know, for instance, there are... Um, special interest groups within the APM, the Governance SIG, for instance, that is running around uh, an event, a webinar tomorrow lunchtime about agile governance, the reality or dream in the US and the UK. 
And the Kanban board is a big part of that. It has a role to play in those worlds. So that's one of the reasons it started to have a growth in various markets. On the subject of Agile, there's a, there's, there's, um, a paper, the source is PMI's Pulse of the Profession, the High Cost of Low Performance, February 2014. That highlights how organizations that are a little bit more ag um, agile in their approach have an ability to adopt and achieve the strategic aims of the organization, 69% rather than 45%. So I'll be interested to know, as you as organizations out there, do you ad adopt agile project techniques, project management techniques? Are, are you pretty much bound by a more classic waterfall approach? It appears in the audience is around a 50-50. I think it's actually, yeah, it is 50. 51% are saying yes. So there is a sort of an acceptance and a realization it has its role to play. And that has been clear to me at various APA, APM events I've been to over the past few months, how there's a recognition that it is part of the world that we all operate in. So there's some questions, and a colleague and I just highlight some questions, but we'll come back to those questions towards the, uh, the end of this session. So we've, we've got the, the, the clear view that there's a sort of a growth there in terms of the, um, the, the, the lean and agile and how that's affecting the Kanban board and its adoption. But there are other reasons. We talk about visualization. Now, there are various studies out there. There's something from Gallup that says 90% of work involves decision making. No big, big news there, perhaps. But the fact is the Bolton, Boston Consulting Group are also highlighting over the next 15 years the layers are possibly you could say bureaucracy that are out there, it will make hard and hard for people to see the information to help them make those decisions. And three out of five of us don't have that right information. We can't see it. So visualization is a key part for any of us to do the jobs that we're dealing with. There's something called the Ziegenick effect that says visualizing neutralizes cognitive overload. Basically, a picture paints a thousand words. So if we can start seeing what we've got ahead of us, we can start limiting the work in progress and therefore action on what needs to be worked on. Manage the flow of information through the organization. Start completing what we've started and therefore really drive the efficiency in the business. But also the Kanban board really starts to help self-organization, which is a key to high performance teams. It's come a lot from the software industry, yes, it's come from the ability to where we're doing, we're doing, um, we might be having scrum, we might be doing fast releases over 30 days, and how we work with each other is a key part of it. But the board is a natural place for teams to gather to discuss what needs to be worked on, and in many respects, the psychological impact, it's not personal, we're just talking about a piece of work, and that really helps the behavior of the team. People feel part of the team, and that's also a big aspect of how, how collaborative planning reinforces efficient project behavior. There are many, many studies out there in terms of people behavior. You know, we know how people learn, how people are motivated, how to shape efficient behavior. Research is out there, but really we've all been there. When you feel part of something, when you know what's going on, you actually will be that much more effective in the role that you play. I'm sure, like me, we've all been on projects where we were just given things to do but had no idea how it fitted in or what other people were working on, and it's nothing like when you feel part of that, that project. And the psychological impact really has a benefit. So the Kanban board can help in that area too. But also, it lends itself to a transparent environment. For those of us who are managers sitting on this call, I think we're all guilty, and whether guilty is the right, we have to get information for the management layer above us as well. So we're always calling for uh, updates, meetings, what's going on. But if we have an environment where transparency is in place, people are empowered in the right areas, and management can therefore look at information, get what they need to find out, without the overhead of calling additional meetings, then we're going to start driving the efficiency as well. But a key part is the technology. It's ready. We have an area now where we might have had pictures like we have on the left-hand side. I've met customers over the past few 
months in the last year where quite rightly and effectively they do have such to-do lists on the board. Things get done. But the technology is allowing us to now have that in touch screen, whether that's such thing as an iPhone or iPad or an 80 inch screen on a wall. We have the ability to take that, what we've had for a while on the wall, into the technology arena. So suddenly we have digital Kanban boards which will allow us to self-organize uh, teams, uh, limit the work in progress, drive efficiency, transparency, and allow us to empower uh, teams and gain control. Perfect. It sounds a perfect world. So is the Gantt chart dead? You know, the, the Kanban's come out of the corner punching hard, and it's giving a view that it's actually essential. You need, you need it. Why do you need the Gantt? Let's be honest, Henry Gantt, 1911. Is it old? Is it needed? Organization Gantt Head changed their name 18 months, two years ago, because of the growth in the role of the Kanban board rather than just the linear schedule. But of course, when it talked about it, it's talking about project management, it's talking about what's relevant. Because when we think about project management and execution, really we're talking about an approach, if we're going to take this right approach, which is from the planning right through to the execution. We need to keep a plan alive with an Agile Gantt, which I'll come on to. We need the control with the Kanban boards. We still have milestones. We still have an, a, a need to look ahead. We still have all the need for the skills that a Gantt chart has. But we also need to add the value to that Gantt chart that historically has been lost. How many of us on this call have received a plan, looked at the plan, and then gone off and produced lists of things to get that plan to reality? Whether that's an Excel spreadsheet or whether that's in a paper form, the two worlds get detached. So the way we see it, we come back to this, this, this view of what roll, rolling wave planning is about. And it's really about integrating these three visual collaborative planning tools, depending on the complexity of the project. Right from the low end of master planning and action planning, so we have the need to, we have some clear milestones. It might even be, on the most basic terms, we're going on holiday in four weeks' time. What do we need to do to get that done? Well, we don't need a Gantt chart to allow us to look ahead for that. We need to-do lists to get that, those milestones to be achieved. Right through to a more detailed plan where there is still a level of look-ahead planning in Gantt that allows that plan to come to life. But at a certain stage, when the plan's at a certain level, we need to put the meat on the bones of that plan through some action planning. So, how do we do that? We start talking about the Gantt still there, but perhaps not just any old Gantt that historically we've used, but a more agile Gantt. The agility depending on the project that we have in mind. So I'm just going to give a couple of examples here on this screen that it could be, we, we, we've got an environment here, a project. The blue line that you can see is a timeline for a project. And this project just has a, a set of milestones. It has five milestones over a, a, a number of weeks or months. But we need to bring those milestones to life. How are we going to actually achieve that milestone? So we can start linking on here a Kanban board. So we've got a team halfway down the screen on the right hand side called Team Gamma. They're going to have 15 pieces of work to get that milestone to be achieved. So let's put that in a to-do list in a, in a Kanban board. The minimum Kanban board would have a plan column, a worked on column, and a done. But can it have any number of columns? But this is when a team has the activities that bring a milestone to life. And the two could be as simple as that. But we can also understandably have a much more detailed Gantt chart, whether this is something that's important into a project room from an MSP environment or produced elsewhere, but we have a Gantt. And this Gantt will give us that look ahead planning of a whole list of activities, an organizational breakdown structure on the left hand side, and suddenly we can pick on an activity in this instance, the SEM revised strategy, but add the, the Kanban board to that activity. So if you've got a clear screen, you'll have a number of little boxes on that activity line, some dark, some white. And that's actually the activities linked to in a, on a Kanban board. So the ones struck through have been done, the ones still involved are to be worked on. 
So let's go to the Kanban board itself. Bring that a little bit larger. So suddenly, we've got the meat on the bones of that Gantt chart reflected by the Kanban board itself. And really, collaboration is about picking on a piece of activity, and it's the real world. Communication, as we can see on the right-hand side, underneath this particular card. Sophia communicate with Asa about what needs to be done. So suddenly, the reality of a plan that we've all had, and it has its role to play, can be brought to life with that communication and getting it done in those to-do lists that historically we might have had on a sheet of paper or an Excel spreadsheet. So we can now move towards saying, well, actually, we started with a potential fight, but no. We talk about coexistence, but the level of Gantt, the level of Kanban will depend on the type of project that we have there. But the reality is the Kanban will allow us to start providing an environment where suddenly the disparate world that are working on these projects can work effectively together but it can't do it on its own. We talked about it, we've got a, a, an environment where we need to empower a team. What is the team? The team isn't necessarily 10 people in one room. We need to create an environment that empowers that world and provides an, a collaboration tool for that project team. Because we're not just talking about project management execution, the level of the Gantt and the Kanban board but we need the teams to work effectively together and obviously as we said earlier we need to organize the information as part of that. I'm just going to take a few moments just to flesh that out in the context of a project before we move on to the questions themselves. We talked about it. We'll have invariably people part of this project, part of the Gantt and the Kanban who are no longer in the room. How can they be part of the project when they're not in the room? Well, we need to provide them using technology, the Kanban board potentially on an iPad, an iPhone, an Android, whatever it might be, a laptop, but allow them to interact. So suddenly the project team, we're creating virtual project rooms, but secure rooms for people to work with each other to organize the work that needs to take place for the milestones to be achieved. So we need to enhance the collaboration both internally and externally and therefore enable teams to self-organize what they need to do through the Kanban board and literally look at project-specific communication on your teams. So an environment such as this where we have a communication feed on the left-hand side is that virtual project room. All those little pictures of people on the top, they could be in any organization, anywhere around the globe or let's be honest, the reality, in two offices spread across London effectively in one room, sharing information, sending information to each, drawing attention to information without necessity, necessity necessarily for email, but also using the social aspect of liking. An important aspect to ensure that the team works as one for the achievement of the overall objective. But we still have that filing cabinet in the corner. We still have the need to share information where suddenly somebody is in a different location. We need to have the confidence that we have the version conflicts managed so people are accessing the right information when, for instance, it might be a PRINCE2 plan that we're working off with a PID. It might be a proposal that somebody's working on for the fleshing out the activity list. How can they be confident that they've got the right plan sorry, the right PID or the right proposal or whatever it might be to achieve that. Well, they need to be able to access again, mobile. They're out, they're about. And we're not just talking about mobile for disseminating information to, people interacting with, because as we've already said, people are on the move a lot more than they used to be. So suddenly we need that filing cabinet where somebody's invited into the project room that only sees the folders of documents they're allowed to see. But then we can actually start communicating and collaborating as a team across a document. This could be the specification document for the piece of work linked to the project. But we also could have the need to review a document 
and send it around an organization project team, which as we said is made of internal and external people. And chasing those people that haven't finished the review and ensure we have an audit for what's been going on. I suddenly go back in time. We go back in time to a period where we all get excited about technology. I started there. I even only went back in 1980, because that's when I graduated, and go back further. In many respects, nothing is that new. It's just technology is allowing us to embrace it a little bit easier, perhaps. Because here we got Eisenhower, who had a comment where, in preparing for battle, I've always found that plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. The reality is we need to plan, but we need to ensure that plan is growing and adapting as we go forward. And that's why the Kanban board can help bring to life the Gantt, which is needed for that initial point of planning looking ahead. And the Kanban board in the collaborative world can allow us to ensure that that planning continues to adapt and change as we go forward. A couple of seconds on the organization, because some of you may or may not heard, have heard of Project Place. This is an area that we've been focused on since 1998. The company was founded in 98, and it's only focused on people-centric collaboration. It is in the cloud, and it has had around 145,000 projects that have gone through the service, and nearly a million users. And now, as of a month ago, we're part of the PlanView group. And so therefore, the whole picture of collaboration alongside the Gantt is recognized and will be supported going forward. These are some organizations that have been utilizing Project Place, a selective few. And this information and such details on such customers can be found on our website. Can both Gantt and Kanban be used to manage projects? I see Gantt being used to plan longer term and determine key targets where the Kanban could be used to manage shorter term greater detail. Uh, that, that is in essence where I feel they, they, they can be utilized. Uh, they do coexist. Um, the, the, the concept of look ahead planning will still be a Gantt world. The need for activities and dependencies against some of those activities. But I think in many instances there are projects out there that don't lend themselves to be fleshed out in such a way. And the speed of change. Let's remember that there are, the, the world that we're in, we need to adapt, we need to change. And if we go too far down in a Gantt, it's hard to undo and change that. And the agile world of the Kanban will allow us to flesh out the reality of where we are in the shorter term to keep that plan alive. How would the Kanban board work with offices across various, sorry, with teams across various offices and countries? Um, it would work. The, the, the principle here uh, obviously, what, what we're talking about in Project Place's perspective is, is Kanban is out there. We're utilizing the Kanban in our, in our world, and we're creating virtual project rooms where the people going into those rooms could be anywhere. They could be sitting at home in a coffee shop, wherever it might be, and they're interacting through the Kanban board. And so the workload on a Kanban board is generally organized by departments, a classic one that we have seen out there is an organization delivering projects has some work to be delivered by an external company. So we'll have a Kanban board to-do list for that company so they can interact. And that company could be dipping into the project room at a completely different time zone to the company that's working on the project locally. So yes, uh, they could do. Paul, if the majority of your project team are remote, can this visual process work? Yes, I think it can, uh, and the reason I think it can is it's like everything. The, the, the world is going to be reflected by the Kanban board and people's interactions because the physical nature where the person is doesn't matter. What's critical is using the Kanban board to keep track of the, the activities that people are on. And I think the key here is in a lot of these projects that we have coming out there will be the hybrid world where we'll still have that Gantt to give us some look-ahead planning, but we'll bring that plan to life as I said a number of times now, with, with, with the Kanban board. And the, the principle is those people are remote, and, and they can interact with either their own device, a laptop, a company iPad, a company iPhone, company whatever it might be. So yes, they, they definitely can. There's a, do we have any NHS customers? Quite specific, but left field a little bit. Uh, yes, we do. Um, 
uh, I think that's been answered anyway, but we, 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 we've done a lot of work and there's contacts with West Hertfordshire NHS who, who first utilised this sort of world from a, a controlled document uh, world because of projects they were doing with local councils and construction companies. And in latter, they're really sharing workloads through the Kanban board. So they are case studies out there. Yeah, they, they, no, I'll address that. There's a, the gentleman quite right. Great looking tool, but isn't there a risk of social sharing that people spend too much time reading, reacting to other people's tasks rather than their own. I think that's that's right. Let, 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 let's let's cut to the chase. Projects still need to be managed, and and there is a balance in any world. I I, I think the the counterbalance to that that the, the real benefit when we've got a plan and we've got people in a project team, if we if we manage it correctly and we adapt to this new world, then there are people in a project that we don't really fully understand all the skills and experiences they have. So if they cut suddenly are hearing about the conversations and the activities that have been put on board and are transparent, they can add value that they, they have that perhaps people didn't realize they did. And also, we've all known the projects where some people have loud mouths and, and get very interactive and other people who are quite quiet. And this creates an environment where everybody has a voice against the project. And I think with all these, you can obviously monitor and see how much people's time are, are spending on things that aren't relevant to them. In, in, and even in the Kanban board, you're setting timelines for when bits of work need to get done, so you can keep track of it that way. But I think, yes, quite rightly, anything, some people, wherever they are, will find time to spend time on things they shouldn't, and it's probably no different here. But really, the, 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 the positives, I would say, would outweigh the, the negati negatives. You don't need a Kanban board for a project room. Why do you link the two? I think that the, the, the fact is, uh, the, the question there is, no, you don't. Obviously, it's to-do lists. But what we're saying is that a lot of these projects where now collaboration, where we do need to communicate, it lends itself very effectively to it. Because a Kanban board could be sitting in a physical area as well. You know, we have within our own environment development teams. Yes, we have development teams across two con continents. Uh, 50 developers uh, with uh, eight uh, agile teams that debate and discuss pieces of work. But we have people sitting in the same room around a Kanban board. So no, they're not. But at the end of the day, as we said earlier, whatever project techniques we're using, whether it's primarily waterfall or whether it's going to be the Kanban board, the reality is projects these days are involving people in different locations who need to work with each other. That's where the virtual office becomes a critical area. Is the Kanban the solution or the combination of Gantt and Kanban? Perhaps others each, uh, sorry, perhaps others each project on merit and complexity. Um, yeah, exactly. There, there are scenarios out there where we'll still need a heavyweight Gantt world uh, and there are scenarios as I tried to portray in the presentation where there'll be some activities that need to get done that literally are milestones brought to life with a to-do list. And then there'll be that middle ground where the, the two really work effectively. I would say from my own experience prior to being part of Project Place, as I said, I fully understand and recognize the value of the Gantt and Waterfall approach. But I have been there in environments where the project gets to a point, is a plan, and then it, it's detached from the reality of people in the room getting things done. And sometimes that break is, is a loss and an efficient way to do the process. So the Kanban board at the end of the day is allowing us to bring the to-do list right back into the project so the work, uh, the, the two work very effectively with each other. So in theory, is it right to say that you are managing the WS through the Kanban board? Well, uh, in, in a way. I, I think when we, the, the WS is, is really allowing us to, uh, in certain situations, not drive the Gantt chart and the work breakdown structure to such an extent that it, it sort of forces um, a rigidity on us that, that, that just isn't that healthy. So I, I think it, it is allowing us to manage the WBS to a point that makes a lot of sense, enough look ahead planning, and then brings it to life with, with the Kanban board. Um, because invariably, we, we talked earlier, or I mentioned earlier, customer-centric approach, and, and a lot of people will expect from a customer point to change. They'll arrive with a, a set of requirements that are completely different to the ones they have before. And we have to adapt to those um, with a smile. Obviously, contractually, we'll have change management in place. But the, the, the need to be able to change and adapt is growing in a whole host of places. And the Kanban board will allow the Gantt to become much more agile, hence what we talked about early 
earlier an agile Gantt. Am I right in saying that Kanban provides the same information that a Gantt, but in a different way? No, my own view, not really. Uh, the reason I say that is the Gantt is still the, the master of the milestone. You know, and, and, and I was at a, reach, a recent APM event chatting to some individuals, and quite rightly there's a view that there still needs to be something still needs to be done. Uh, and of course it does, and, and, and management would expect that to be the case. And the Gantt chart will allow us to have a clear milestone and what needs to be, at a high level initially, what needs to take place to get that to be done. Uh, but what the Kanban board is therefore doing is bringing that bit up to the milestone to, to, to life, giving us that control list that people, when we start working effectively, we talk about self-organizing teams actually pick up pieces of work that they know they can work with effectively with team members. It does not move. Somebody mentioned earlier on a question about dependencies. We still have a dependencies at the high level of the Gantt chart which allow us to control that project, but we're bringing to life through the Kanban board itself. One thing I will about, say about pricing without uh, talking about the specifics, um, in, 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 in the essence, what we're talking about here is, is projects. And we're talking about people that are members of projects. So if you are in a project room, working on a project, there's only one instance of you. There's only one of you. So you can be in any number of project rooms. So organizations, what we're working towards is organizations having the ability to plan uh, any activity over a period of time, create execution project rooms, and just throw people in them. And the fact that Paul Bamforth might be in them in 10 project rooms or 100 project rooms doesn't make any difference. The fee for his involvement in a project room is, is the same, irrespective of the number of rooms. Can you produce a project highlight status reports from the software? Yeah, one thing I didn't go through, because obviously this isn't a, a full demonstration of the service, and, and that's something that we will very happily do for anyone that wants to get a flavor of how these project rooms will work, is I've already alluded to the fact that you might have a number of project rooms. So you need the ability to sit over there, a project overview or a project uh, environment to allow you to look at those projects, look at how, coming back to it, how are things performing against KPIs, even though those are the most basic KPIs of time, cost, and effort of how we're progressing them. So yes, there still is that ability, remembering we still have the milestones and the achievement of them. Um, so yes, that is, that is part of that. Is there reporting capability in the software? Uh, yes, there is. The reporting capability as I've already alluded, can come across all projects or within one particular project. But also as a member of a project, you are sitting in an environment where you're, it, you're not necessarily always in that room. So you can be drawn into the room when somebody feels it's something relevant for you to look at without the need for emailing large files and documents around. So your notification and connect, uh, connection with that project room is, is very dynamic. So in that respect, you, you, you know what's going on, you're drawn in, and you'll have a clear feeder on any device that you're using to show you what uh, work that you've been expected to look at, what's been assigned to you. But at the higher level, you will have and can have uh, weekly reports and daily reports about what's changed in the project room uh, if that's something that you, you, you require. So yes, reporting is, a, is, is, is very much part of it. For a PMO, how would the Kanban provide an overview of the program? I think this is where we're coming back. The, the two are they're not mutually exclusive. You, you, you would still have a, a world where a PMO, for example, organization we're working with, where PMO might be having the idea of a project through to the execution. So we might have an environment looking at the capacity planning of the organization, the ability to look at resource management, the ability to do um, EVA, whatever it might be around that environment, to the point that we've approved a project and we launch it into a project room. And that's where the Kanban board will actually add the flesh on the bones of whatever plans come out of the PMO. So they work very, in fact, they work with each other. I would suggest the PMO, if it's looking for that side of running a portfolio of projects and actually reporting the portfolio and managing the day-to-day -day execution, would really have um, a balance between the classical Gantt world and a PPM alongside a service such as, as such as Project Place. And that's one of the reasons where ourselves with, with PlanView, who are very obviously strong as part of that area of the PMO, that the pitch has been completed 
with a collaboration environment. So it really depends on the problem that's been solved. 